Our industry power prices over here are getting more competitive, not less. They're actually rising in these other countries like the UK and France faster than they are here. Um, so I don't think we're going to see uh, industry leaving because of uh, high electricity prices. The, the, the point is that if you have a transition, you have winners and you have losers. And of course, if I would be one of the um, uh, a big energy um, industries, I would um, also fight against uh, somebody who is um, um, taking parts of my share. And every year we take 3% of the, of the total uh, uh, energy share. So that means that the cake of the others will get smaller and smaller. They are all myths because uh, these legions are constructed by uh, lobbyists, uh, by interested parties who would like to blame the energy vendor, the energy transition, and would like to stop the whole process because they don't accept that there will be a transformation towards renewable energy and away from coal and nuclear towards renewable energy. And they block all this and they have created campaigns that we should believe that there are increasing electricity prices and we will go to coal and the industry is leaving. But that's not true. The opposite is true. The stock exchange price, the wholesale price for electricity is low. The industry is going well. Um, we are, have now a very high share already of renewable energy of 25 percent. So we have, to, we have to show the facts. Through uh, the higher share of renewable energy, we have seen on the energy stock exchange uh, um, decreasing energy prices. Um, so uh, it's the opposite as well because the French government actually is accusing the German government to help too much energy intensivized uh, companies. Uh, so there's an unfair competition because in Germany companies are able to have lower energy prices, energy costs. This is just one point. The other point is even if we have rising uh, energy prices, I would consider this as a competitive advantage. The more companies can, well, um, invest and are able to execute on strategies to become more energy efficiently, they will have a much, much better uh, cost competitive uh, advantage uh, around the globe. Industry in Germany, a huge energy using industry has today again the price of 2005. Okay, so they are complaining, but they don't have any reason for that. So that's, it, that's propaganda. We need to recognize that we have started from a very, very low level of uh, renewable energy. And uh, it was uh, really unimaginable for many, many people to actually reach 25% renewable energy. Um, in particular, already now in the year of 2014. Uh, I remember when we have put together the first feed-in tariff law, the EEG in Germany, uh, around 2001. It was unimaginable for many, many people that we would reach uh, 6 or 7% until 2010. So now we are way beyond of that um, and if you come from a almost 100% fossil or nuclear based economy um, there are certain challenges on the way to transform this economy and the society towards 100%. So the current status of 25% renewable energy is just a milestone towards this 100% and we need to tackle new challenges and uh, these are in particular to integrate renewable energy uh, among each other so uh, to better bring uh, fluctuating energies like solar and wind together, uh, include more storage options, uh, include more base load um, capable renewables like uh, biomass um, or hydropower um, and of course we need to do something uh, on grid stabilization. We need to enable uh, renewable energy and storage technologies to better uh, stabilize uh, the grid from a technical point of view. This is already possible. Now we need to have the market frameworks 
to enable these technologies. We need more grids and also long distance grids from the north to the south of Germany, for example. We need intelligent grids on the distribution area, and that's also very important. And in the midterm, we need more storage. And uh, this needs to be constructed right now. We need a good pathway. We, we need to have the right instruments. And we don't have this uh, right now. We have a share of renewable energy of 25%. But there's still a long way to go. And we need to start now and have to move forward. I think we're beyond the debate about should we switch to renewables. It's going to happen. The markets are pushing it right now because the prices have come down. The reason why we need to focus now on community ownership is because when you build up an infrastructure like that that's set to stay for decades, you're not going to go in later and say, you know what, this could have been a community project. We could have had municipals doing it. We could have had a residential market with homeowners putting up their own solar. Uh, the utilities are going to tell you going forwards, this is you know our projects in the desert in Arizona whatever it's all cheaper than what you're doing uh, and that's correct in terms of the kilowatt hour produced where it is but by the time you get it everywhere across the country the, the, the price tag can be a lot different once you have embedded all of this ownership with the incumbents the companies that are already giving you the energy um, they are going to have transitioned towards a renewable economy and retained ownership of the markets, retained their monopoly. I was going to say oligopoly. It's actually a monopoly in the States uh, in, in most areas. Um, and so you're going to have missed the boat. Future system consisting of 80% of renewables, which is a target in Germany, means that you have to have a completely new system of how to secure supply and how to secure, uh, let's say, economic model of pricing. Um, it's pretty clear that it needs to be economic. It's not the purpose of what we're doing to have, a, let's say, socialism in electricity. It's the exact opposite. We need to have th millions of uh, decentralized systems and they will be as democratic as it had never been before in the electricity supply. So because small and medium-sized companies can run it and of course small and medium-sized companies are always in the competition not like the big oligopole of, of some four large utilities before, or even governmental-owned electricity supplies, how it is in many countries of the world. Looking back, I think uh, this was the natural development because we have started to develop policy frameworks which enables the normal citizen to participate in the energy vendor. So in Germany we have 80-85 million people, um, a lot of them are already participating. They are putting their solar roof on the uh, their solar panel on the roof. They are participating in um, in in uh, burger uh, wind parks. So wind energy projects where citizens can participate financially as well. And, and I think this really has boosted the energy vendor, the energy vendor, the energy transition in Germany. And I think we need to, uh, to follow this path uh, in the future as well. What we now have to do in Europe, for, from my perspective, is to say, OK, we did invest a lot of money in the feed-in tariff systems in Germany, in Spain, in Italy, in the Czech Republic. And we did some in France and now in, in England. And what we, did we achieve with paying a, quite a high price for a kilowatt hour in the, future, in the past? It's now that we now have cheap electricity. And from my perspective, it's once again telling the people the story again and again. Because now they have a mind, oh, 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 these guys invested billions and it was very expensive electricity. And now in the next years we have to, let's say, reframe that because it's pretty clear it's no longer like this. And Southern Europe is at a very, very cheap electricity already because they have more sun than Northern Europe. And, but, but also in Germany we are below 10 cents per kilowatt hour. Uh, for production of photovoltaic, even in Berlin, which is like not the most fancy uh, sunshine state in, in Europe. <laughs> but, but let's say this means you, you could easily produce solar electricity in southern Europe, uh, maybe below 5 cents already, without subsidizing, which was the most important at this point. It's not so much the technical issues. Uh, I think renewable energy have proven that uh, from a technology point of view, renewables are able uh, to do a lot more than the 25% uh, today. 
of course, there are technical developments uh, needed. I think the biggest point are from a communication and psychological point of view that we need to raise the acceptance among um, the um, decision makers uh, that renewables are actually able to do this. We need to um, offer different business models to those who are doing business in the conventional energy business today because they are really the biggest uh, barrier to the development because they are losing market share. In an economic environment where you don't have rising energy need for obvious reasons because we want to become more energy efficient, um, you have just a different share for different companies for different energy technologies. So it's all about the economy at the moment. So I'm quite confident that uh, the renewables will, um, 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 yeah, will make their part. As I see that the prices of solar panels go further down and wind turbines go further down so that if you see the climbing, climbing um, uh, prices of uh, coal and uh, gas and oil and as well you see the, the, the falling prices uh, of, of renewables, it's quite a question of time and not if we have this change happening.